All this yellow stuff may look like a lot of old dry grass, but it is in fact almost ready to be turned into bread. This will be lovely with a drop of jam and butter on it. What the city boy is trying to say is that this is wheat and we're surrounded by thousands of acres of the stuff here in Lincolnshire, the heartland of British farming. And what a perfect place to restore a giant of the fields, a 1955 Massey Harris Combine Harvester, isn't it, Claire? In fact, I'll do the work. Just after the Second World War, these red monsters transformed British farming. Philip Shotbolt's dad got one back then, and Philip's never forgotten the thrill of watching the 780 slicing through the wheat. And five years ago, he managed to get hold of one of the few survivors. But it's done nothing but sit in his yard since. And that's where we come in. So this must be it then, Phil. Yeah, this is the Massey Harris 780. We'll take a look. Let's have a look. <laughs> there she is. Well, there's certainly a lot of bits. There's a lot of machinery yeah. there, isn't there? Uh, most of it's there. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I'll go most and have a closer it's... look, if you don't mind. OK. We had one on the farm exactly the same as this, and one of my early childhood memories is sitting on the toolbox behind father as he drove it, and uh, there used to be a huge big pulley wheel to the side of the toolbox, and I can remember him saying, don't put your fingers in that boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of my highlights of the harvest day, to be able to ride on the toolbox. Their noise and sound will go with me forever. Amazing, these machines. You have to pack so many jobs into a small space. The Massey Harris 780 did for farming what the Model T Ford did for motoring a combine affordable by the average farmer. It was such a common sight munching through Britain's fields that it was nicknamed the Red Beetle. But of the thousands made, only a handful have survived. Oh, this is fantastic. It's at this point in your life you're supposed to get a desire for a sports car, Phil, not a combine harvester. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, but the, something like this, once restoring, um, not everybody's going around restoring combines. There's plenty of people going around restoring old cars and boats and aeroplanes, that sort of thing, but combine harvesters, no. And I think unless we do, they're going to be gone forever. So, Phil, here's the deal. We'll take away the combine and do our absolute best to restore it to perfection, but you won't be able to see it until it's finished. Is that all right with you? I'd like it up and running for this harvest. Well, I'm no expert on the country, but even I know the harvest's only four or five weeks away. What do you think, Claire? Well, you're pushing it. We don't know quite what we're going to find inside it, do we, yet? But we want to see it in action. We certainly so do. do. I. No yeah. point otherwise, is there? Well, we'll do our best. All right. Here's how we do. Yeah. Now the work starts. Loading up all 900 pieces of her, and it will be me in trouble if we leave anything behind. See you later, Claire. Good luck. And I'm off to see if I can find out any more about these giant red beetles. It's a pretty complex bit of kit I've got on the back, but I think I've found the best man in Britain to give her back her va va -voom. a man who truly knows his wheat from his chaff. Ron Knight's factory builds some of the world's most high-tech spraying equipment, but his real passion is restoring classic farm vehicles. If you're doing something you really like, there's nothing better. He's lost count of how many he's brought back from the dead. He's a man who's never happier than when he's got a spanner in one hand and a corroded combine in his workshop. There's, there's not many people restoring combines. You've got to be a little bit of an eccentric to set about one of them. If he can't get this beast running, then no one can. It's a, it's a nice piece of kit. It's OK, it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it as the eye. First, oh, but we haven't looked at it in detail oh, yet. Well, that's correct. That's correct. Should we go through it in the way yeah, the corn goes well, through it? If we, if we start on the header, <laughs> never mind about. Whilst the engineering department get their hands dirty delving into the innards of our machine, yeah. I'm doing a bit of digging of my own. I got its logbook off Philip so that I could try and find its previous owners. I'm trying all the farms on the list, but so far I'm not having much luck. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, thanks very much for your time. 
Thanks. Yeah, goodbye. Well, that's one of the bigger farms in the area, and they have no record of it at all. But I know it was there, because it's on the logbook. Unfortunately, they just can't remember it. I'm going to try the next one. Next, it's the Coopers. Well, I'm sure my husband Clive would remember it, and I'm sure he'd be pleased to talk to you about it. Oh, well, that's great. Thanks very much indeed, yes. Bye. Well, that's good news. That was a certain Mrs Cooper, whose husband owned the 780, and she's very sure he will remember it, and he might even be able to tell me something about the history of it. Well, I'm going to go and see if he can, right now. Well, the research might be going well, but this week's challenge is fast turning into a race against time, as Philip's wheat ripens in the fields. If we're going to make the harvest, then I'll need all my engineering skills. Oh, you broke it. <laughs> I did not. Claire will have to go into outer space. And who says spare parts don't grow on trees? Must see. At the salvage squad workshop, Claire and our combine connoisseur, Ron Knight, are giving our salvage 780 the once-over. Should we go through it in the way the yeah, corn goes through well, right? it? If we, if we start on the header... <laughs> the front bit of the harvester is called the header. It's like a giant lawnmower which gathers and cuts the crop, feeding it deep into the machine. The fingers are in pretty good nick, they're not too bad at all. But it's been left with water uh, uh, and chaff and soil and all that in the header. It's rusted through, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right through. It's got to have a new bottom in there. And when you've had a we hard day working, you, uh, you don't always clean things out the way you should do. Well, the, the, working them in the day don't give them any problem, or in the time, it's when they store them. They They're only used a few weeks a year, aren't That's they? Right. So they sit for yeah. another 11, mu 11 months. Maximum, I would think this would do probably 10 days a fortnight, no more. The working of it has not ruined it, it's the storage of it. Yeah. And, uh, and even modern farmers leave the combine outside that cost £200,000, so uh, <laughs> there's your problem. So my old mate Rust has seen to the header, but what about the rest of this beast? The next bit of the machine the wheat meets is the threshing mechanism, two rotating drums called beaters. They smash the heads off the stalks and rub the outer husk, or chaff, away from the grain itself. Once through the beaters, the grain and chaff drop down past a huge fan, which blows the lighter chaff out of the back of the combine, whilst allowing the heavier grain to drop through a sieving mechanism before it is lifted up to a storage tank at the top. When the tank is full, it's emptied using an auger tube, a giant Archimedes screw. Meanwhile, the stalks, or straw, is shifted away by moving platforms called straw walkers and chucked out the back of the machine. But it looks like our straw walkers need some work. Oh! There you go. The, they're the straw walkers, Claire. All the way round, really. though, really. They walk the straw out the back. When it comes off the back of the beaters, it's thrown up and it comes round. So you can see that the wooden straw walker blocks. These lumps of wood have seen better days. Leave them as they are and the straw walkers will clatter like hell. Like everything else on the combine, the straw walkers are driven by a series of belts and pulleys connected to this beast of an engine, a Perkins L4 diesel. Well, it's a big lump of a power unit, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is a big power unit. Well, I'm more suspicious when things have been sat around for a long time, but this is barely run in, is it? It only works for two That's weeks right. a year. That's right. Done nothing. It's wore out more by standing than it is by working. Do you reckon now, it's the runner? It will strike up. But you reckon? I always assume the worst on these things uh, if they've been sitting uh, you around. Will, you would think so. Yeah. Well, but we'll give it knowing, a go. knowing a Perkins L4, it will be difficult to start, but it will go. If it will run, um, well, we have a saying, if it works, don't mend it. <laughs> yeah, fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> Crikey, they're getting cocky. I know I'm just a city boy, but shouldn't we check it out before we go any further? I'll keep my fingers crossed that Ron knows what he's doing. Because he and Claire have got a heck of a lot of work to do on this baby, and not much time to do it. Starting from the front, they'll have to patch up the rusty header, adjust the threshing mechanism, overhaul the straw walkers, and track down a hell of a lot of red paint. If her engine works after that, she'll be as good as new. But that's assuming there's nothing wrong inside this combine. And there's only one way to find that out. Take it to bits. The first job is to get the hood off and look inside. Going. 
Only then will we really know how big a restoration this is going to be. Ron, come and have a look at this. Good gracious. What are we going to do with that? This mess is one of the most important parts of the combine, the back beater, which sweeps straw back onto the walkers. Even though it's made of steel, it's been ripped apart like paper. How did it get into this state? So that hole is not supposed to be there, no, is no, it? No, 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 no. Well, we're going to have to fabricate a new one. Well, we've got to make a new one. Major operation, that. It's got to be balanced and everything. All the steel's got to be exactly the same, because it's turning at about, I would think, a bit over a thousand revs a minute. Right. So if it's not made correctly, it vibrates. And why this isn't shook itself to pieces, I don't know. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, this is all part of the fun of restoration. You can look at something from the outside for as long as you like, make as many plans, but it's only when you take the covers off that you really know what's going on inside. And on a 50-year-old combine harvester, there was bound to be something. Dear oh dear indeed, with morale wilting in the workshops, the fields at my end are looking green. I found out from the logbook that our combine used to be owned by a chap called Clive Cooper, who still farms in Norfolk. I'm on my way to see him now, but first I'm stopping off for a bit of time travel. Even I know that for centuries scythes were used to harvest, but there was some mechanisation before the combine harvester and I'm off to the Norfolk Rural Museum to find out how they harvested 1940s style. Ooh, Before the introduction of the 780, this is what a harvest looked like on most British farms. Mechanization was two horsepower at the front and a reaper binder like this Alba 5A at the back. But the rest of the labor is a bit more human, as my teammate Richard Dalton knows only too well. You gotta keep up, eh? Uh, yeah. Keep moving, it's a good sense of urgency. Get the crop in. We'll stand those up together. Well, it's an amazing machine, and how, is it, how on earth is it doing this? Well, what, what it does, it actually goes along, and the standing crop is actually cut. It passes along canvas belting, up and over the machine, and is packed against a piece of string, which is held in a knotter mechanism. As it gets to a certain size, it trips. The, the needle comes over and brings the other piece of string round, ties it, and then Throws the, throws the sheaf out, ready to then to be handled. Come on, get up. Come on. Obviously a very different world. The world of farming with horses rather than machines, and presumably a much more social world. Yes, you, you obviously working with an animal, so you get that sort of nice bond between you and the horse, and then the volume of uh, sheaves that you're producing out of the binder all the time, sort of flying out, flying, they all need to be stood up, so you actually, it's a tremendous team effort. The whole village sort of uh, would be involved, the whole countryside would be alive, many, many people just actually getting the harvest in. Blimey, I'm knackered, and I've only done an hour. During harvest, this back-breaking work would go on for days. And all that sweat's only cut the wheat. We've still got to get to grips with this monstrous old threshing machine. It has two beaters, just like our combine, which Ron is taking apart. The beaters are the rotating drums which hit and rub the wheat against smooth metal surfaces, separating out the grain. The front beater is the main one, it's the strongest and does the majority of the work. Whilst the back beater sweeps the stripped straw further into the machine and onto the straw walkers. Most of our back beater has been smashed up at some stage, so I've been let loose with Ron's new toy, a plasma cutter. A kind of gas torch for surgeons rather than scrap men. A fantastic tool for cutting away the rubbish without harming the good bits. It's a job I like, it's really destructive, it's very satisfying. Cool, blimey. Give her a scalpel to do it carefully, but she can't resist a bit of butch when it comes down to it. What's left of this frame will end up spinning inside the combine at 1,500 revs per minute, so don't wreck it! Ignoring Claire's vandalism, Ron's doing the washing up. Jet cleaning years of grease and oil off the combine, not a pleasant job. So perhaps sweating away in a field was not such a bad idea after all. We must have cut a right few loaves worth of wheat by now. 
Next, we've got to feed it into this 1920s Clayton and Shuttleworth threshing machine. So what are we up to here, Richard? Right, we've got to get the, the sheaves off the stack now, on top of the drum, so it can be fed and we can separate out these, uh, the grain from the straw. So we need to use the pitchfork, get it in, points up to the ears, up in one movement, up and over to the feeder. That's it, nice and quickly, so we can keep that nice constant rhythm and flow going. So what's exactly going on in this machine? It's been driven by the 1950s uh, diesel full field marshal, which drives via a belt the uh, drum mechanism in the, in the threshing machine. And the uh, sheep will be fed through the top, the string will be cut, it'll go down, hit the drum, which is really rotating, and it'll go through a curve mechanism which squeezes the crop, and that then breaks off the straw, and the straw will go out the back end. The drum then threshes, the little threshes it, like rubs it really hard. The big fan at the bottom, which is blowing up through the machine, blows the actual uh, chaff away, and then you're left with the grain, um, which is then runs through the machine via sieves, so it's a good sample, and that's all bagged at the end in the sacks. So it's, uh, you know, the whole process done. Nice, isn't it? Harvest in. Yeah. Harvest home. To the end product. The end product, yeah, all that hard work, safely gathered in. Beautiful. And that's why our 780 and its descendants are called combine harvesters, because they are a combination of these two machines. The combine's header does the job of the reaper binder, cutting the crop ready for threshing. And the body of the machine does the job of the thresher, separating out the grain. The difference is that in the combine, it all happens at once. And the 780 was the design that first brought all of this together for British farmers. For all the technology, the end product remains the same. How many people need to run this? Um, usually about five. Five, six people, really. That's quite labour intensive. Yeah, and that's... you get the boy to clear out the chaff at the bottom. I knew I'd get this job. This gets everywhere. While Suggs is going back in time, I'm gearing up for the space age. I'm going to zap rust with tons of sand fired out of my gun at hundreds of miles an hour. the old paint and rubbish flying and results in a gleaming header after just 20 minutes. Back to the metal and you can see just how destructive the rust moths have been. Thin, corroded metal that looks like lacework. Not to mention the years of bumps and dents. It's a gentle art of panel beating. Left like this and the header would soon fall apart. As a result, we're de-denting with a hammer. So it's more skilled than it looks. And bending up new plate to cover all those holes. Go on, you have my permission to hit it with a hammer. I'm going to hit it. Yeah. We're just trying to bolt everything up and then weld what isn't bolted into place so it's not going to move. But most of that seems to be involved hitting it with a large hammer. Is it necessary to make all that noise? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Where's your ear defenders? <laughs> I'll have to be working with you. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Eyes. With the panels welded in place, the header is structurally sound again and the wheat has a smooth path up into the machine. Back in the 1950s, this header was the farming equivalent of Concord's nose. These 780s were a revolution for the British farmer. One man who remembers those times well is Clive Cooper, past owner of our 780. So this is a field you would have worked? Yes, yeah. The old messy. Yeah, that's, uh, we used to do it in here with that. Farming was changing so fast back then that Clive's family were keen to capture it on this amazing film. That's his father-in-law, Harry Duffield. 
And there's a much younger Clive on a tractor. But pride of place in this Norfolk epic is the Red Beetle herself, our 780. So it must have been a big day when this great big new machine arrived. Oh, yeah, it was, yes. I mean, I used to all come to the field to see one yeah. at, the, at that particular time, but they don't know so much now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that was a took a lot of back breaking out um, of combining, because that was a tank of combine. And uh, we made a high trailer, and we had 16 stone corn sacks, and we used to stop the combine and fill the sacks up on the trailer. So when we'd finished at night, we didn't have to go around and pick them all up all lay about the field. The tank used to hold a ton, so we used to carry about 24 on the trailer. So we used to fill the 24 up, and then I'd go and unload them, while my father-in-law was still combining. Yeah, we must have been a revolution, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Clive also held a vital piece of information which might solve the puzzle of our smashed beater, the one which is giving Ron and Claire so many problems. Some of the stones were like that on that old field over there. And, uh, you imagine had... they could do quite some damage, no? Our combine had worked in the flint-strewn fields of Norfolk all its life, and one of these big stones yeah. must have become caught up in the header yeah. and thrown onto our beater. It caused catastrophic damage, which Ron and Claire are still dealing with. That's right. on. Yeah. They have made up new metal sheets to be welded on to what survived of the old beta spindle. Last bit. Idle bit. Let me get some grip to hold it. i tell you what, I like having you as my beautiful assistant. Would you really? Yeah, moving the cabs around. <laughs> you might get sent to commentary if you'll be a black girl. <laughs> Ron's just fine-tuning it with a hammer, aren't you? That will do for the time being. That's got us out of trouble. Anyway, because this, this was a complete mess. Well, we, it was unexpected, put it that way. Yeah. Well, but look it, at that, it, eh? It, it, it's... Uh, put us back a little while, but never mind, it's not yeah. too bad. That'll be OK. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's OK. It may not look much, but it's important that we get this right, because it's spinning at 1,000 RPM. If you don't get it balanced, it'll just tear itself to pieces. Unfortunately, with all the delays, we might never get to see this beast in action. Three weeks of good weather has brought the harvest forward. And worse still, Ron's been called out to bring in the early crops with one of the 780's descendants. Ron's gone off to help with the early harvest, leaving me here alone. And you have to ask yourself, is our combine harvester really going to be ready by the time our crop is? This week on Salvage Squad, we're restoring an agricultural phenomenon. We've got to get a 1955 Massey Harris 780 combine harvester up and running for this year's harvest. The summer is nearly over, and our combine expert, Ron Knight, has had to stop work to help on the farm. As Claire sets to repairing the straw walkers on her own, it's becoming obvious we are falling behind schedule, and you can't ask week to wait. The straw walkers move the straw itself to the back of the combine, where it's chucked out. These things are sacrificial wooden bearing blocks, they're called that because the wood wears out instead of the expensive metal crankshaft. Even though synthetic materials were available in the 50s, Massey's found that beech, with its close grain, still made the best bearings. the old worn-out set of bearings from the straw walkers. After 50 years, I think it's about time we made a new set.
Well, that should be good for another 50 years. But before the blocks can go back into the hood, I've got some more patching to do. Well, we're back to bare metal here. I've got a new bit to put on. Now all I've got to do is hold it up. How hard can it be? Very, I suspect. Come on. <sighs> Don't look at that one. I didn't quite weld the clamp to it, but I've made a bit of a hole. <laughs> Don't tell Ron! With wheat being cut across the country, and Claire intent on melting holes in our combine, I figured it was time for this city boy to sort things out. Come on, want a bit of brute force on this. Now you have that in. Yeah? Yeah, and we'll separate the auger. This is the unloading tube, which attaches to the bottom of the 780's grain storage tank. Inside it, an Archimedes screw turns and transports the grain from the storage tank up the tube and out into a waiting trailer. We're just trying to get that out yeah. at that end. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pull it. Oh. Hold on, Claire. Well, you're supposed to be holding it. Um, I was holding it, but you pulled it very hard, no, and that bit snapped useless. off. Oh no, that that's been bro that's been cracked for ages, but you broke it. <laughs> I did not. You did. You pulled you did. it. I was just holding no, it. No, it's your fault. <laughs> it's your um, fault. I still need to get the shaft out anyway. All right. So just We're in trouble. This pulley casting, which I didn't break, should attach the Archimedes screw to the engine via a rubber belt. Now it's broken, the screw can't be turned, and our combine can't be unloaded. I can't believe you snapped that. Why did you want to do that? Don't know my own strength. Have you still got the pieces? I bet you've lost them. <laughs> I've got them here. Who's going to tell Ron? Claire, who's going to tell Ron? You are. <laughs> I don't want to tell you Ron. Are. No, you're a big boy now. You do it. You broke it. I didn't break it. You did I was break it. holding I it. You pulled it. It and came I... off in your hand. Yeah, if I you haven't pulled it so hard. The broken casting is 50 years old, and recasting this precision-made piece before the harvest won't be possible. It wasn't like this in the 50s, when Massey's had local teams of engineers ready to go into the fields to make repairs, ensuring that the harvest never had to stop. But Messi's closed years ago, which means a trip down to the local parts shop is out of the question. <laughs> Luckily, we've got Ron back on the job. He thinks our best chance is to cannibalise an old combine. But they are few and far between. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Bottom's fall out that toolbox, look. Let's go and look in the other one. So we can... He's driven over a hundred miles just to get to these rusty remains in the Midlands. And despite an extensive search, Ron can't find what we're looking for. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. It's hard to believe that these rusty wrecks were once the most sought-after farm vehicle in the country. And until they came along, British farming was still dominated by horses and manual labour. However, the widespread food shortages of the Second World War forced the government to heavily subsidise farming. And Canadian combine kings Massey Harris, already successful across North America, developed the 780 to break into this new, prosperous British market. The 780 proved perfect for UK conditions. Massey's factory in Scotland went on to make a staggering 28,793 machines in just nine years. Phew! Hopefully, the remains of one of these combines will contain a replacement for the casting I allegedly broke. It's just a case of finding it. Luckily, Ron never quits. Despite his initial setback, he's tracked down another possibility. It's a long shot, and it's owned by farmer Colin Howell who bought the 780 years ago, but hasn't used it for some time. Good afternoon, Colin. Hello. Hello. How are you, my boy? This uh, 780 combine. Well, that's right. Look well, at the stairs. It, look, it looks as if it's hiding. Uh, yes, I'm afraid it's gone uh, a little bit beyond its old boy yeah. day. How long do you reckon it's but been here, Colin? I would say uh, late 70s. We bought it as a scrap uh, combine, and we used the engine out of it on the drying pack. 
and it's been there since. <laughs> Looks like it's got some vegetation in it. <laughs> Good gracious. Good gracious. Good gracious. I think there's much left, Ron. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You're keeping your language very polite. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Well, if the bit's on it that we want, it's perfect. Yeah, we're, what we're looking for, we're looking for casting, Well, it's the orbit that lays out the bay. Yeah. See if we can get at it and uh, see what we can do. Oh dear, oh dear. Look here. Here's a bit, here's a bit we want, my dear. This pulley at the back here. You can't out hitting it, can you, with a hammer? Well... You're in a hammer <laughs> in a combine, it's the happiest thing I've ever seen. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> Seen better days. Right, Colin. The mark, the piece could be on it that we're looking for. And can we have it? You help yourself to anything you want of it. Oh, thank you very much. This isn't a combine harvester. It's a nature reserve. Tree huggers, look away now. Well, to get to the casting on the other side, where the boys are planning just to tip the whole of that combine over, including the tree, uh, using the power of the JCB. So uh, it's going to be messy, but we'll, we'll get to the bit we want. I hope it don't break the bit I want. Come on, my boy. I hope he's watching that casting. Bring a right over, boy. Lift it up. Up. Oh, keep going up. Keep going up. Go on. You want, you want to get out another... Hey, another... he's got it. Go on. Look at that. OK, whoa, 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 whoa. Dear, oh dear. There's no half measures with Ron, is there? If he wants a bit and it's on the back, tip the whole thing over. Take the tree with it. Can you rake your tines back? That's a bit of one. Just bring it out. It ain't broke. I bet that casting's in perfect nick, look. Good. Look at it there. Good. Where's my hammer and chisel, Claire? <laughs> Do you often find yourself doing this wrong? <laughs> in fields? Well, yes. <laughs> Turning other people's combines upside down yes. just to get a bit off? Yes. <laughs> Occupation hazard. That's the bit we want. Look at that. Brand new one. <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly say brand new, Ron. Straight <laughs> from the field, though. Right, oh, let's go and get it blasted. <laughs> we'll leave all the mess to Colin, then, yes, shall we? Yes, OK, yeah. Unaware that whole forests have been destroyed to fix his combine, our owner, Philip, is taking a break from harvesting the same fields his father cut 50 years before. The picture we have here is my father driving it. He was always the combine driver. I suppose that uh, reflects as to how easy it was. You know, the boss drove the combine because it was an easy job. <laughs> uh, yeah, back in the 50s when we had, when father had four, five full-time men on the farm, um, each man would have had his own job. There would have been a stockman, a dairyman, probably a shepherd and um, probably a couple of tractor drivers. Um, whereas today, my job now is I'm the combine driver, I'm the tractor driver, I'm the dryer operator, I'm the forklift driver, I'm, I'm all there is, I'm everybody. <laughs> That's the difference that we've got today. When Philip was a child, the harvest was the highlight of his year. We've all got sights, sounds and smells that we remember from our childhood. And sad or funny as it may seem, the 780 is one of my childhood memories. I mean, I can remember standing outside the barn when they were getting it ready for harvest and thinking, oh, the combine started, harvest is not very far away, and I used to be jumping up and down, getting really excited, and, and uh, going to bed that night, I'd be really excited because I knew that harvest would probably start the next day or the day after, and... Uh, it was a big moment in the farming year to see the combine working. And they were everywhere, the 780s were, everywhere you looked, like red beetles all over the landscape.
Back at base, Claire's been busy painting our combine's 900 plates, cogs and wheels. She's left the biggest part, the header, until last. Our Beetle is finally turning red. She doesn't want to stop, look, does she? You can work so long on something, but it isn't until you get that first coat of paint on that you really feel you're getting somewhere. And at last, it's going to look like a combine harvester. Now we can get her back together. First, it's my bearings for the straw walkers. Not too much, Ron. I'm getting most of it in my hair. <laughs> eight this way. See the eight? Yeah. You're going to hit it with a hammer, aren't you? Uh, sure answer to everything. Now turn it. There you are. No sweat. I reckon if I wasn't working, you'd hit me with a hammer as well. <laughs> <laughs> now for the de-smashed back beater. Oh. Oh, 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 wrong. That's not a bit of the jigsaw puzzle back in. Where's my persuader? <laughs> your persuader? Yeah. You want your hammer again, yeah, don't right. you? That's right, I want my hammer. You sure you want your hammer? Yes, I do, I want my persuader. That's what I want. For you, sir, your favourite tool. He's got a workshop full of tools, but it always comes down to the hammer in the end. The wheels are on, but we're not rolling yet. Despite my little mishap, Claire and Ron are so up against it, I'm being allowed back to help. Otherwise, we'll miss the harvest. Yeah, where's this going? I've got to go in there. Right. First task: install the elevator, which takes the grain up into the storage tank. That's it. Hey! Hey! Oh! There's always a stubborn one. Well, at this rate, we should have it done by about 2019. Shall we, Claire? Wee, wee, wee. All you do is hang around in libraries and then turn up here, give us a load of knit. you a tap, Claire. Well, if I knew it was going to be this, this much. Tap. Never fear. Suggs is here. Yeah. Still not, doesn't want to move. <laughs> oh, no, it's coming. It's yeah. not comfortable, eh? I guess it saves the day. How about that? You hammer like a girl. How about that? I've got the flaming thing in, though. <laughs> made your day, eh? It's made my day, my <laughs> There's one thing still needed to get her running, though. The huge Perkins diesel, which runs Swarwood work just fine. Yeah, knowing a Perkins L4, it will be difficult to start, but it will go. So apart from a lick of paint, it's exactly how it was when Philip handed it over to us. Ron, well, is it really worth putting this fan belt on? Is the <laughs> engine going to work? Uh, of course it's going to work. It's perfect. Well, you keep saying that, yeah. but... Look, it's got a coat of paint on it. It's bound yeah, to work. Yeah, it takes more than a coat of paint to make it work. <laughs> There's a hole in my bucket, dear Eliza. Well, stop singing, mate. You'll never make a living at it. Filled with water and diesel, it's time to find out if Ron made the right decision. If the engine doesn't fire up, we'll miss the harvest. 1955 Massey Harris Combine Harvester. The wheat is more than ready for her, but it will rot in the fields if the engine doesn't start. Right, up here in the air-conditioned cab. As standard. As standard. Should we get the engine going then? Switch it on, on the top there. Are you sure it's going to work? Yeah, I don't know. What are the odds, Ron? I stuck my neck out and... What's the odds? Yeah. Oh, I'll go 50-50, <laughs> should we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. You stuck your reputation on the line here. Well, I, I said the engine didn't want anything to enter it for a start. And these engines are never wore out. They never do enough work to wear out. Yeah. And I would reluctant to take it to bits because you can make yourself work, you see. If it, work, if it works, don't mend it. You've given it some build-up. Let's see, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, keys yeah. on, ignition's on. Pull that up. Keep it up. Pull, pull. I am pulling. Whoa, there.
That engine is pure music, but we ain't harvesting yet. The weather's gonna change tomorrow afternoon, so we're gonna have to work late into the night in a race to get her done in time. If we do, then look out wheat. It's almost looking like a combine, isn't it? I've saved a bit for you. Recognise that? Yes. That's the bit you broke. No, that's the bit that you put me off and I, it, you broke uh, accidentally. <laughs> no excuses. It goes on down there. Excellent. That was my fault. I didn't break it. Hey. Oh, sorry. All right, so I've got the heavy bit. <laughs> Time for a pint, I feel. We've done all we can for now, so tomorrow, if the weather holds, we can rev her up and reunite Philip with a combine like the one he rode when he was a kid. It's the end of summer, and we must have the last patch of wheat standing anywhere in Britain. It's ready for harvesting, and our combine's raring to go. All we need now is Philip and Suggs. Five weeks ago, this machine was a sad pile of scrap tin and cogs, destined to rust away like thousands of others. But now, restored and painted in its finest red, it's ready to gather in the harvest, just as it did when 780s ruled the fields. And just like those early combine days, the whole village has turned out to witness our farmyard revolutionary in action. <laughs> Farmer Colin Howell has turned up to see what we've done with his spare part. I've managed to get Clive Cooper over from Norfolk. This beast was once his, and he never thought he'd see her again. But what about her new owner, Philip? Will it look and sound like the one he rode with his dad? Well, what do you reckon then, Phil? Oh, wow, what are you doing to my combine? Is this the old 780? I don't think this is mine. <laughs> I don't think this is mine. What do you think then, Philip? You've been busy. You've been busy. Don't you think we've been... You've been very busy. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, you know, both of you. You're looking forward to a drive, are you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, you're looking yeah. forward to a drive. Bring back memories. It does. When you were a boy. When I was a boy, yeah. sitting on that little toolbox at the That's back right. there. Are you sure you, you couldn't sit on it now, could you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Knees getting away. Are you sure you want it? Are you sure you don't want a sports car? No, this'll do me. This'll do me. It's your driver, then. Well, up, it'll want a little bit of milk. And now for the moment of truth. Cut corn or red faces all round? <laughs> is what it's all about, bringing the past alive. Toolbox, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> well, you've grown up a bit since, haven't you? I have, yeah. It must be at least 40 years ago since I... Uh, no, longer than that. 45 years ago, I think, since I rode on the toolbox of a 780. So how's it feel to be driving it, then? Good. Yeah, really nostalgic. Love it. Brings yeah. back some memories. Yes, very much so. And they can take away everything, but they can't take away your memories. <laughs> Philip's not the only man here whose past is wound up with this 780. So, Clive, how does it feel for you to see the old girl running again? That's right, a treat to come and look at it. I never thought I'd see it all done up like that again. Not when I sold it, no. Bring back some memories. Oh, yeah, a lot of memories, yeah. Clive thought that these fantastic home movies would be the only lasting memory he'd have of his old 780, a combine that changed his working life. But now he's going to get another chance at driving this revolutionary machine. 
Do you fancy having a go on it? I would love to. OK, it brings back even more memories when you end up covered in dust and with chuck in your hair. Go on, then. Go and give it a go. Taking Clive no time at all to get back in the swing of things. The tank is definitely full. That's one ton of grain being emptied. I hope my casting holds. Don't come back. Yeah, I'll just come back and act though. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy it. I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Now I know what it felt like for farmers getting hold of these machines in the 50s. Instead of taking weeks of hard work by hand, they could now gather in their whole year's livelihood in a few days, safe from rain and storms. That is the noisiest, dustiest thing. I've got most of the grain in my hair, I think. That's it, brilliant. I can't believe I've been in charge of such a great big monster. Absolutely brilliant. It doesn't make any sense, but break it. That's it. I'm giving up the urban life. I've become a farmer. I've turned my garden into a field of wheat. I have this in the garage. You can't find the bread. Just go back to London on it. Every farm in Britain now uses technology derived from the 780s groundbreaking design. And thanks to this, the wheat in every loaf of bread we eat would have been harvested by a combine harvester. The Massey Harris 780 really did change farming forever. More next Monday at 8. And don't forget to visit the Salvage Squad website at channel4.com slash science to find out more about the show. Next tonight, Stevenson.